Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about and reviewing the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray. I received this sample in my October Ipsy subscription and I have been using this, learning how to work with it, trying to figure it out, and I'm here to share all of my thoughts with you and to tell you whether I think this is a product that you may want to get. So what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about Orbe as a brand, as this is my first product of theirs that I have used. I am then going to apply this a little bit and tell you a little bit about my experience using it, and then I'm going to give you my review. And for all of that, there are going to be timestamps down below in the description bar, so you can go to whatever part of the video you would like to watch. To start my discussion about this brand, I will just tell you sort of my first impressions of this, having sort of watched YouTuber, beauty YouTubers for a while. I was excited to get this because in my mind Orbe is this luxury sort of hair care brand. Maybe not luxury, but high-end hair care brand. People always rave about the scent of this, or scent of Orbe products, and a dry texturizing spray, it sounded like something that would be kind of fun. So in learning about the brand, they have been around since 2008. Uh, it was started by Daniel Kanner and Tevia Finger. Um, but the collaborator for it and who it was named for was Orbe Canalis. So that is the hairstylist who is sort of the brain behind the brand, let's say. So they describe this brand as blending craftsmanship, performance, and decades of styling experience. They say that today Orbe is a best-selling, award-winning brand that has sparked deep connections with its consumers. And I do have ideas of watching YouTubers where they are very loyal to this brand for certain hair care products. So they talk about how the founders worked with innovation labs and specialty collaborators around the world to create custom formulations that truly surpassed anything in the marketplace. They are supposed to be things that hold, that don't flake, that they're skincare grade, shampoos, all this wonderful, wonderful stuff. And they do also specifically talk about the fragrance. So they say that most companies choose their scent from a stock fragrance library, but Orbe was the first to use a fine fragrance in its hair product. They worked with a legendary perfume house to design their signature fragrance, Cote d'Azur. So they embody glamour and warmth of the French Riviera. Bright, seductive, shared scent awakens with hints of sun-drenched Calabrian bergamot, Sicilian orange, Amori apples, and leafy greens. Sandalwood, uh, vetiver, and crisp amber lend their soft, woody notes, while tuberose and white butterfly jasmine uh, from Orbe's native Cuba create a sensuous and invigorating experience. Uh, the fragrance runs through the line to compose a beautiful experience for the hair and spirit. Uh, so those are big claims for this. So let's get into talking a little bit more about the product. The dry texturizing spray is at its 10th anniversary, which means this is one of the original products of this brand. If you are buying the full size of this, which is 8.5 ounces, it's going to cost you $46, and I'm pretty sure that's $46 American. So buying a full size of this as a Canadian, it's going to be expensive. This right here is one ounce, so it would be eight and a half times the size of this sample. The description of this is, Bigger, better, full-on, glamorous hair. This invisible dry hairspray builds in incredible volume and sexy texture. Patented polymers absorb oil at the roots, uh, leaving you with just styled hair for days and nights. It says to use it that you shake, you spray where you want volume, you style to desired finish uh, and hold, and it's a brilliant alternative to dry shampoo. So I'm going to kind of roll in together here a demo and me describing how I tried to use this product. So you can decide if it's something that is going to work for you. So I am a lover of dry shampoo. Um, my roots do get oily after a day, so second day hair, which is actually what my hair is today, uh, requires a little bit of dry shampoo, and then it's usually good to go. Uh, and then day three requires a bit more dry shampoo, and usually day three is a put my hair up kind of day, but it still is good with dry shampoo. And because I don't have really any natural texture in my hair, my hair is pretty much stick straight. Uh, I do enjoy the dry shampoos that provide more volume. So my favorite dry shampoo is the Batiste Extra Volume. And I know the one drawback of that is that it is powdery and it has a white cast. But I love the fact that it just sucks up all the oil from my hair and also leaves that sort of powdery feeling texture that just gives you extra volume or if you're putting your hair up 
in a bun, it sort of gives a little bit more volume and lift to it. So when I received this, I actually did not read the description of it right away, but it says on here that it is a brilliant alternative to dry shampoo. So I went in thinking this was going to kind of be like the Batiste extra volume shampoo, is it would be like a dry shampoo that provided lots of texture and lift. Uh, and it did not feel that way. Um, so I was trying to use it kind of on like day two hair and that didn't seem to be working so then I kind of went in with a lot of it on first day hair to try to give a bit of texture um, and then I read the description and I thought okay this is supposed to absorb oil so I went in with it again um, let me just get into what I think of this is it didn't work for me and I don't know if it's just I'm not using it properly or I don't know what to expect from it but when I use a dry shampoo it makes my hair look pretty refreshed pretty quickly. I'll usually spray it on in a few places, sometimes give it a mix around, sometimes not, and I'll throw my hair up in a ponytail for like five minutes while I'm doing some other part of my routine. Uh, in my mind, that sort of gives it a little bit to absorb the oils, and then I'll sort of work it through my hair, make sure there's no white cast left anywhere, and then go on with styling. Putting this on, and I'll put some on just right now, first of all, it's very wet. And I'm not a fan of dry shampoos that go on wet. I like the ones where it feels dry right away in your hair. So I would usually section like this. And I will say that it doesn't give any wet, um, white cast, but it just feels really wet on there. But you know, that's okay. But the problem was it doesn't soak up any oil. It doesn't make my hair look any less oily and it just feels really wet in there. And even when it dries down, it doesn't feel like it's a texturizer as much as it just feels like I have sprayed hairspray on the roots of my hair. And yeah, I mean, it's giving more volume, but it doesn't do what a dry shampoo does. So I would not use this as a sort of day two styling agent thinking you don't need dry shampoo because it definitely does not do that. You know, my roots still look very, and my day two hair today wasn't too bad, but when I've used this on really, you know, like day two or day three hair, my hair just still looks really greasy. Uh, so to me, it also doesn't, I mean, it's like, you can see it gave a bit of texture and lift there, but no more so than sort of the dry shampoos I use. And the other thing they talk about is the scent of this, and to me, this just smells like hairspray. I don't understand where this wonderful smell is supposed to come from because all I get is hairspray. Now on the page for this, it lists all of these wonderful ingredients like the Orbe Signature Complex made up of watermelon, lychee, and Edelweiss flower extracts. Uh, it says the absorbing agent for oil is zeolite crystallines. There's apparently kiwi and passion flower extract for antioxidants, ginger root extract um, for circulation and shine. <clears throat> Mango extract, uh, again for antioxidants and vitamins, all that sort of thing. But when you actually look at the ingredients, uh, you know, hydrofluorocarbon is the first one, dimethyl ether is the second one, alcohol is the third one, um, you know, different polymers, zeolite, you know, all those great ingredients they have are really far down towards the end of the list. So although there is stuff in here that is good for your hair, it really just feels like a hairspray to me. <laughs> and it's won so many awards and it's been around for 10 years. So I don't know if maybe at the time this was made 10 years ago, uh, there weren't a lot of things that kind of did what a dry shampoo does. So this was really great. But for me, I just can't see spending like over $50 on this when for me, a dry shampoo is going to do a better job of what I want it to do. Uh, that is my review of this product and I'm a little bummed because I feel like I really wanted to love it and it just didn't do what I wanted it to do. But I would love to hear from you guys if you've used this product, if there's a way that I should be using it that I'm not. Let me know all of that in the comments. I would love to know if there are, 
you know, really great dry shampoos that also give a lot of body that I should try. I'm always testing out new dry shampoos, mostly because I'm kind of a cheap person, so I usually just buy whatever is on sale at the drugstore. So I tried a bunch of different kinds, but let me know any other kinds I should try. Uh, and thank you so much for watching my video today. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, uh, you can click on my face, which I'll make pop up right there so you can be subscribed. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.